NASA had a decision to make over the weekend. Send Commander Butch Williams and co-pilot Sonny Williams to home to Earth on Boeing's Starliner capsule, which had been marred by issues, or keep them on the ISS until February, when they could hitch a ride with SpaceX. It chose the latter. Wilmore and Williams lifted off in June on June 5th for the Starliner's first piloted test flight. They were expected to return about a week later, but helium leaks and equipment issues raised safety concerns and prompted NASA to delay the astronauts' return and keep them aboard the International Space Station. The situation is putting pressure on another crewed mission, dubbed Polaris Dawn. It's set to launch early Tuesday morning after being delayed by a day. The SpaceX venture will include four private citizens. It's the first of three commercial missions, partially funded by billionaire Jared Isaacman who is also going to be on board as the flight commander. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood. Bill, when, when I spoke to Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams back in May before they embarked on this journey, they said they were ready for any issues that could arrive, arise, but I don't think that included nine months in space. So how, how are they doing, and what are they going to spend this next several more months, what, what you know, what are they doing with all this time, essentially? Well, hey, John, good to see you again. Um, you know, first of all, astronauts, they are professionals. Uh, Will Moore and Williams are both uh, veteran military test pilots. And every time an astronaut takes off to the station, they always know there's a chance that something could happen that would make them either extend their mission or cut it short. In this case, obviously, it's quite an extension. Uh, they basically have become part of the space station crew. You know, we hear them on air-to-ground audio from the space station on a daily basis. They're doing experiments. They're helping out with maintenance. I mean, they're busy uh, just as much as every other space station crew member. And, of course, during the rest of their stay up there, the six months that's being added to it, uh, they'll become full-time members of the next expedition. Uh, so from NASA's perspective and the station's perspective, perspective uh, they'll be busy the whole time. From their perspective... Will they spend any time wondering how things are going on home and at home and things like that? Well, of course. Yeah. And and Wilmore and Williams uh, will return to Earth in 2025 on a capsule um, built by Boeing's competitor, SpaceX. What was behind that decision and how how's NASA's relationship with Boeing these days? You know, it's really interesting. For their part, the Boeing engineers think the capsule is totally safe, would easily bring the crew back home uh, in safety as needed. Uh, NASA looked at all the same test data, but they decided, you know, we just don't have enough certainty that those systems that you mentioned, the helium leaks, the thruster problems they've had, there's no certainty. You can't prove that those problems won't get worse after the ship undocks. And, of course, they've got to be able to fire their engines and get out of orbit to come home. Uh, so NASA decided to play it safe. I, I don't think that's terribly surprising, given the experience of the shuttle Columbia disaster uh, back in 2003, you know, when they had a known problem and didn't address it with obviously tragic results. So um, I think from NASA, NASA's perspective, they didn't have any choice at all. Uh, the relationship with Boeing, uh, it's hard to say. NASA is counting on Boeing to perfect this spacecraft. They want to have two spacecraft, you know, to go along with SpaceX uh, to carry astronauts up and down to the station, just in case a major problem comes along that might ground one of the companies for a long period of time. If you only have one uh, provider and they go down for a while, then you've got no way to send people up or down to the space station. So NASA's counting on Boeing to keep this going. Boeing says they will, but you know, that's all TBD. They got to get the spacecraft back, see what it's going to take to get it, you know, up to snuff and how much that's going to cost. Yes, indeed. The dollar, the dollar signs as well. Let me get, before I let you go, four private citizens are scheduled to lift off just before 4 a.m. Um, for a spacewalk in partnership with SpaceX. What more can you tell us about this mission? And are there any safety concerns given that's what's going on with those astronauts on the ISS? No, I don't think so. And, uh, you know, all space flight is risky by definition. Uh, this one's a little more risky than most of these commercial flights because, as you say, it's the first flight to feature spacewalks by non-government, purely civilian uh, uh, individuals and private companies. Um, you know, I think it's going to be really interesting. They're not only going to be carrying out this first commercial spacewalk, uh, the Crew Dragon spacecraft itself is going to be going higher uh, than any spacecraft since the Apollo program. Uh, they'll set a new Earth orbit altitude record in the process of all of this. And so it's pretty dramatic stuff for SpaceX. It's definitely a, an impressive mission and does definitely carry a bit more risk than usual.
Bill Harwood in Merritt Island, Florida. Thank you. A pleasure as always, Bill. Thank you.